Good morning, Thrive. We're so happy to have you guys here with us today. Real quick, we do have a couple ways to watch our online service. You can watch on our Church Online platform or on YouTube. So if you're watching on our Church Online platform, go ahead and jump in the chat and say, hey, we'd love to hear from you. And if you're watching on YouTube, grab a mobile device and jump in on the chat too. And if you're a little bit confused as to how to watch our service today, please head to our website, that's thrivechurchca.com and head to the online service link. It's super easy, you're gonna love it, and it's the best way for us to watch the service online together. So from wherever you're joining us today, coast to coast, in your living room, on your couch with your family, or at a coffee shop, or on a walk, let's just take a minute to invite God into this time together. We're gonna get started in just a few minutes, so grab a coffee, text your friend, and um, let's just enjoy this time that we have together today.
depend on you. Oh God, thank you for your son that is more than enough. That you sent here to this earth to be more than enough for every single one of us, more than we could ask for, more than we deserve. More than enough for every situation that we experience. And we honor you this morning for that, God, for giving us a way maker and a miracle worker and someone who will stand right beside us and above us and behind us and before us. We celebrate that this morning. You are here moving in our midst I worship you I worship you You are here rearranging destinies I worship you I worship you You are here Turning lies around I worship you I worship you You are here Working miracles I worship you I worship you Come on As you are way maker Miracle worker, a promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here. Searching every heart, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every life. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning life. Around. I worship you, I worship you, you are here, bending every heart, I worship you. Darkness, my God, 
That is who you are. Come on, even when we don't see. Even when I don't see it, you working. Even when I don't feel it, you working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you working. Even when I don't feel it, you working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you working. Even when I don't feel it, you working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never sing it again. Even when I don't see it, you working. so grateful oh it's so good to know that God you are more than enough and that you are the way maker and that your promise is still who you say you are Lord we just come before you today and we just surrender everything over to you Lord and when there looks like there is no way God you will be the way just thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. There is no other song other than Waymaker that has impacted my life and touched me more through these last few months. Promise Keeper, Miracle Worker, Light in the Darkness. That has been God for me, and I hope it's been God for you all these months as we've been social distancing and kind of just getting through the year. Welcome to Thrive Online. We are so glad that you've decided to join us today. We have enjoyed uh, just getting to know people virtually and trying new things on video, and we are so pleased that you've been part of this journey with us. But I have great news, and that is starting October 18th, we will be opening our building for in-person services again. Now we're gonna do all the stuff we need to, 25% capacity, cleaning, social distancing, masks, everything that we need to do. We'll be ready, 
We'll be safe, but most importantly, we'll be together. And we are so excited to see you here. So starting October 18th, in-person services. But don't worry, our online services will still be available and we hope that you continue to join us if that's what you prefer to do. The only other thing I have to announce today is that our One Youth will continue to meet here at the building, six o'clock tonight. Bring your middle schooler through 12th grader, uh, six o'clock here at the building, and they're having a great time getting together. Let's go ahead and continue with Unleashing Hope. It's been a different year without a doubt. School's different, work's different, Eating out is different. Shopping is different. And yet, in the middle of it all, we've found moments of hope. Moments of laughter. Moments of learning. Moments of joy. Moments to connect. Moments of faith. Unleashing hope can change even the most different and difficult of years. Even a small increase in your hope can change your outlook, your attitude, your future, your eternity. What if the one truth we need to cling to in times like these is that Jesus gives us the ultimate hope because when we can believe that, hope changes everything. Welcome today to Thrive. We are so glad that you are joining us and that you are watching as we are in the middle of our series, Unleashing Hope. Have you ever had one of those memories from someplace in your past that also wasn't something so memorable, but also had an incredible message or uh, a life lesson that went along with it? Uh, I'll never forget one of these times for me was in my neighborhood growing up uh, when I was younger. My bike was everything. Uh, it got me where I wanted to go. It got me around in my neighborhood. And in my neighborhood, it didn't matter where you could go 10 blocks in any direction. I knew families and people. And it was just one of those times back in the 80s that was just awesome. And I remember being in middle school at the time, and I would get myself into a little bit of mischief sometimes. Okay, if I'm really honest, I would get myself into trouble sometimes. And where I would get myself into trouble uh, most often came from one single place, and it was this. My mouth would get me into trouble all the time. I would pop off, I would talk smack, I would do all of these things. And in our neighborhood, I don't know about yours growing up, but in mine, there was those kids that you liked, you hung around with, that you're friends with, and there was always that, that small group of kids that were just the, the, the neighborhood punks, you know, and they would always try to be tough and all this stuff. And I remember one day I'm off riding my bike. I'm coming home from a buddy's house and, and I'm headed for home. And uh, these guys were in their yard and they, come and they started talking or whatever. And I just started talking. They started saying stuff to me. I started saying something back. Next thing you know, uh, this bike chase ensued. They started coming at me and there was a couple of them. There was just me. And I'm like, I got to go. So I took off and I started headed for home and I'm cutting in and out of blocks, going down alleys. I'm headed for home. And I have to tell you, I was flying. It was one of those moments that I was going. And this wasn't like I look back on it and, you know, was I really going that fast? No, I was. I was cruising because I knew I got to get home because these guys had a reputation and I did not want to get caught. And so as I'm going, I'm literally within a half a block of my house. I'm feeling like I'm free and clear. I'm going really fast as I'm riding and I do this. I look over my shoulder to see who's coming. There's nobody there. And as I was just starting to turn back, bam, I literally ran into a parked car. I go flying over the handlebars, tumble in, and my face lands right into the back windshield. Instantly, I can feel blood falling down my face. I am, my head's hurting. I am like dazed and confused, but my attention goes to my bike because I'm like, that's my life. Is it okay? And of course, it was just in shambles. So I grab my bike because I didn't want to get caught by those guys. I go home. I even have a half my tooth is shaved off. The nerve is exposed. It, it was one of those incredible moments. And like, it's one of those moments that you never forget. But it also was the lesson that I learned that went along with it. And no, if you're thinking was the lesson I should have kept my mouth shut, that's not the lesson that I remember. The lesson that I remember is that I was looking behind me instead of looking to where I was supposed to go. And all of a sudden, that changed everything. And because of that, I run into this parked car. And it's interesting how nothing really good happens when your focus isn't on where you're going. See, nobody goes forward well when they're looking back. 
And we like to look back. That's one of the things that we do. We're constantly looking over our shoulders at times and moments in our lives. It, like I was on my bike to try to say, hey, am I past what's going on behind me? And in, we don't really look ahead to what's coming on. We like to dwell on the past, especially the past that we have big connections to, like my story. We have connections and thoughts from the things in our past that are good, things that are bad, and we just love to dwell on those things. And people like to fall into dwelling on that. They like to fall into dwelling on high school memories and things that happened back then, or a love lost, or a job you passed on, or an opportunity you skipped over, or a degree that you wish you would have gotten, or pain or maybe hurt that you experienced in the past that just doesn't seem to heal and you can't get beyond it and that hurt just seems to follow you into what you're dealing with right now. And so all of that looking back seems to have an impact on your present. See, all of those things from the past pull us to look back. Those past mistakes or, or, or memories, they capture our attention on what was. And what we end up doing is we look back, we lament, uh, it makes us sad. And in truth, when we look back like that, it actually makes us stuck. And stuck people are people that don't have hope. And nobody likes being stuck. Nobody likes to be stuck in a situation or, or a circumstance or, or in a bad attitude or being stuck in a relationship or stuck repeatedly making bad choices or following into a pattern of a bad behavior. See, in being stuck, we don't realize it, but in truth, most of the time, we're actually looking back. And all that looking back robs us of hope. And when we don't have hope, remember, as we talked about in our series, that our outlook dims, uh, nothing going in front of us seems like it can change, and that it just has a complete impact on all that we do. See, just looking back and, and reminiscing, honestly, we think of that as just kind of, oh, I'm just going through old times. I'm just kind of reliving things that happened in the past. Maybe, though, we try to live out of that past because of a time when life was good, and so you're looking back to just kind of feel better about things, but in reality, that looking back pulls you back. Ever find a box of old pictures or maybe some mementos or, or some, some uh, items from your past that, that just kind of take you back in time? What happens when you start to look at those? You find a box of those, you start going, oh my goodness, do you remember this? And you start to relive that moment and then you move on to the next one and you see that entire new thing and you start going all of a sudden a time where it happens and 45 minutes just seems to disappear in a moment. See, going down memory lane is awesome if you just do it once in a while. But if you find yourself sort of camped out there, always going back there, then that's a sign. It's a sign that maybe you're looking back way more than you are living in the moment and looking forward. See, do you know that we as humans naturally have this tendency to look back? We just can't help it to look back. You know, the Bible even talks about one of the most famous stories in it, the biggest examples of back in the Old Testament with the people of Israel. And even if you've not grown up in church, you, you've probably heard about this. The people of Israel are in slavery in Egypt. Moses comes, he lives with God, liberates them, and Moses leads them out. And when they get out into unknown territory... And yet God has said, I've got a place for you. I've got a great place, uh, this incredible land flowing with milk and honey is what the scripture tells us. This is some awesome stuff. But in the middle of it, they meet some challenges. They meet some things. And like all they start thinking about is looking back going, hey, can we go back? We don't like it out here. This is going to be too hard. We know what that is. And so we'd rather go back and live there to what we know rather than trust maybe what God has for moving forward in. That seems crazy to us from the outside looking in because we kind of know this great place that God takes them as a people, and yet, that's often what we tend to do. See, when you're constantly looking back to where you've been, you miss out on the possibilities of where you could be. See, it's why God calls us into something new. See, that's the language of Jesus. He's always moving forward. It's moving us from this place of being sin, driving our lives to being saved. It moves us from being in an old life to a new life. It moves us from death to having eternity and life with him. See, moving forward and having a new future, that's central to our faith. And, and that's why God gives to us to give us hope. See, but in order to get there, you have to change your focus. Uh, on one 
hand, we have this tendency to have our focus going backwards and God's going, that's not going to get you to where I want to take your life. Instead, you have to refocus in a direction that God is calling us and inviting us to go. And to kind of discover that new direction that God wants to invite us into today to bring us some hope and let it be unleashed in our life. Thrive, we need to go to the Word of God. So Thrive, would you open your Bibles today? Yes, we're going to be in the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 through 14. An incredible passage that just speaks to this ability for us to where we look matters to the hope that we see in our lives. This is what the passage says. I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection. But I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Now, this passage was written as a conclusion to an issue that some early followers of Jesus were having. This church that this book is written to, the book of Philippians, was in a city uh, called Philippi. And in it, this church, these people had kind of gotten to a certain place in their lives, a certain approach and mentality where they feel like they've already attained some measure of success in following Jesus. They'd already gone, hey, we, we've kind of taken some steps and we're doing pretty good. We sort of are reached a, a place of we're content with what's going on as if they were like, hey, I'm saved. I've got my eternity secured. I, I've grown a little bit in my faith and, and there's nothing really left to do. I, I've kind of gotten to that point where I'm, I'm satisfied with where things are at. You could have, you could put it this way. They've arrived. I don't know about you, but sometimes we've gotten, you can get to that place in our lives today where you feel like you've achieved some sort of financial status or career status or family status. You're kind of like, hey, I've arrived. I've done all that I need to do. And yet the writer of this, Paul, comes to this point of kind of identifying this section. He's like, hey, I'm going to call out these people that feel like they've arrived. He's like, we need to change that mentality this mentality that says, I've done enough, I've grown enough, I've punched my tick into heaven, I'm good. It's why Paul says, no, 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 we need to press on. We need to press on. And Paul, if you back up just a couple of verses before this, lays out his pedigree. He kind of identifies and says, hey, if anybody's got a resume that they can sit back on and go, hey, I've done, I've got the accolades, I've got the education. If anybody could go, I've arrived, I've been there, done that, I know what I'm all about. Paul goes, I am that guy. He's like, I've, I've achieved a lot, you know what? But instead of resting in that place, instead of thinking, look, I've got all of this, Paul goes, I'm going to press on. And I'm going to invite you to press on to move forward in your faith, in your walk with God. See, this language, press on, it shows up in the passage twice. This sense of moving forward, to focus our attention elsewhere. Not on what was going on in the past and what we've gone through before and how that often can kind of pull us backwards and call us into a place of being stuck. Paul goes, hey, forget what's behind. Instead, I need you to focus on what is Ahead. See, that press language really means to, to just pursue. There's a pursuit that we're just going after it, and, and we're going after moving forward, and we're relentlessly and, and, and actively moving forward in terms of what we can do to see where God is going to take our lives, which means we have to shift our attention. That's what Paul really is inviting us into, to shift our focus to forward, to move ahead into the life that Jesus invites us to be a part of. Simply put, forget about what has been done. Refocus on what this can become. Forget what has been done. Refocus on what can this become. See, all of us have had memories in our lives that we've loved and we've looked back on. But even in that God says, hey, look forward. I have more for you. I, I have promised you, as the passage tells us, this heavenly prize. God goes, there is something great in store that I want to give to you. And that prize isn't just heaven in the future. 
That prize is going, hey, there's some little heavenly prizes where heaven will actually come to earth along the ways in your life if you're willing to trust me and you're willing to follow me. He wants you to experience part of heaven right here, right now, where you are at in your life. If you didn't know that, God goes, I want you to experience some good things right now. See, that's the heart of what keeps us hopeful. That brings us hope when you read a passage like this where we start to think about, wait a minute, there is something that Jesus has for us But it comes down to making sure that my focus is in the right direction. See, refocusing our attention forward changes that. See, the past reminds, but the future that God has for us, he's inviting us into something new. But in order to get to that place of new, we've got to understand what's going on behind. Let's talk for a moment about forget what has been done. Let's think about why that is so important in terms of bringing some hope and refocusing our attention on moving forward to the future of what God has. Putting it another way, it's like, how do you get past your past so that it doesn't just define everything going forward in your life, but you let God reshape it and bring it into something new. See, Paul is pretty clear. Unmistakably, he says, forgetting what is behind. That means we're sort of erasing it on some level from our memory. It's hard to kind of get rid of that kind of memories in our lives, but forgetting our past, forgetting the impact that it's supposed to have on us. Paul's like, hey, there's a lot of things in our lives that are behind us. If you're even a younger thriver, you're going, I don't really have a lot of my past today. Uh, Every one of us do. You look back on some past memory as a young person going, hey, some family trip that your family went on or some moment that you had in school. Uh, there's things in your past that you look back on, maybe some challenging moments that you've had to endure that maybe aren't so far in the past because you realize they're still impacting you today. Others of us have seen a few more years uh, and we've got lots of memory and past that we have to deal with, past struggles, past ups, past downs. See, all too often, we get stuck in those moments. We get stuck in the past accomplishments. We get stuck in the past opportunities. I think one of the biggest ones is we get caught up in the past hurts. We don't realize just how much we bring them along with us, which means our attention isn't moving forward. It's actually looking back. Because when we think about the past, it shapes us and influences us. And when we think about what goes on behind us, it reminds us oftentimes of who we aren't. It reminds us of the things that we're not. And I think if we're not careful, we look back in that way and it becomes sort of a daily thing. See, looking back invites you into a negative shift in your mindset. It it takes your attention away from what God can do in your life and it puts you in a place of going, I've messed up, I've fallen short, I am not getting where I think I should be. See, that kind of, Struggle and mentality is something we need to kind of get over, and it's why Paul in this passage says, hey, we need to forget what is going on behind, but it is so hard for us to do. You've probably read the passage, and you've probably seen that there's a lot of, like, race imagery in it. There's this sort of prize, there's this sense of of athletic, you know, kind of competition that's kind of laced all throughout the passage. And racing doesn't just matter to where you're going, but it can cost you dearly if you're looking back. Back in 1954, uh, there was a couple of runners uh, one of them was Roger Bannister, the first guy to break the four-minute mile. And, but there was another man at that same time period, uh, his la- he was Landy, uh, who actually had the world record, who kind of eclipsed Bannister's mark. And there was this big race that was coming up in 1954 where the two of them were going to meet. Uh, the t- first two sub-four-minute milers, this was an incredibly huge race that was going on. And They had two different styles. Landy was a front runner, loved to get out front, push the pace hard, and Bannister had this incredible finish. He had this great kick. And so this race goes on, and Landy does what he does. He gets out to the front, uh, and it's what happens right towards the end of the race that says everything to how we often approach things. I want you to watch this video with me of the race itself. Let's check this out. So in the race, we've got Landy here up front. We've got Bannister behind. At this point, they're just coming into the final lap of this mile race. And as they get through the, the, the lap mark right here, 400 meters to go, they're going. He's got about a five-yard lead in front of the guy behind him. He's been pushing the pace. And so the question is, what's going to happen next? 
And this is where it gets super interesting. Right here, they're on the back straightaway, about having 200 meters to go. They're running, and Bannister's like, I gotta go. This is all I have. So he starts his famous kick, and he starts running, he starts running, and it's right here that we see something incredible take place. It's hard to see because this video is from 1954 and it's not HD. But if you look at his face really closely, as he's running around the corner, he can't hear and find where Bannister is. And so Landy does the unthinkable. He looks over his left shoulder. He looks behind him to see where the other runner is at. Because he thinks at this point he's got a little bit of a lead. He's on the corner so he can see what's going on behind. But unbeknownst to him, he literally doesn't realize that Bannister had come up on his right-hand side as he's looking left. He doesn't even know that in that moment, his momentum isn't going forward anymore. His mo all of his focus isn't towards finish. It's actually towards what's happening behind him. Because he's concerned it's taking his attention and thought, and Bannister in that moment begins to overtake him, and this is what happens next as he goes past him. You can see it, his language, he feels defeated, he's not there. The gap widens as he goes down towards the finish, and at the end, Landy's not even the picture, and Roger Bannister crosses the line victorious, breaks four minutes again. It's an incredible thing. See, when you look back, you don't realize, but it slows you down. You lose sight of where you're headed, and, and you lose sight of what you need to do to get where you actually want to go. See, that negative way of thinking really kind of crushes our hope and our attention and thoughts are on the things that we missed out on, that are hurting us, that we're holding on to. We often come to that place of going, I don't have what it takes. We don't know what to do. We feel hurt. We feel defeated. We're looking back constantly and settling for less than what God invites us into. The origin story of Thrive, if I take you back to 2009, Sally and I ended up going to a church in Fairfield, and to describe it, it was a church that was on the decline. And Sally and I went in there with this heart and intent to go, hey, how can we just transform and bring some new life to this church? And when we got in there and we started meeting people, and there were some really good people that were trying to be well-intentioned, and yet their attention and their focus wasn't on where we could go. It was always on what they had already done. They were constantly looking back. Oh, we've done this in the past. Oh, we should try that again. Oh, we've done this before. It was always on where they had been in their past constantly, and they were stuck, and it was difficult to actually get them to go, hey, God is something better for us. God is going to take us someplace. And it was from that moment that God kind of shook the people out that weren't ready to move forward and didn't want to say God's got something great in store, but there was a number of people that caught that and said, hey, no, we're not going to let that define us. We want to see where God could take us and now thrive. Our story comes out of that place. But I think in parts of our lives, and if I'm honest, even with myself, a lot of times we look back. Churches today, we see the church in Philippi 2,000 years ago. They often get stuck looking back on the things that have happened before. And they shape what's going on in our lives now. And without even realizing it, they're inviting this kind of negative way of thinking. This negative way of going, we can't move forward. I don't know what to do. This has to change how we approach our lives. When we let that negativity in, boy, it changes everything. I'll never change. I'm not going to get ahead. We're stuck in the same place. Nothing is working. There are times that I fall into that place, even with where we're at right now as a church, if I'm honest, when I let my mind kind of go, oh, why did this have to happen? And, you know, I wish that would have taken place. Even most recently when we get our new building and we've got some momentum going for where God is taking us and then COVID hits and we shut down. Even throughout these last seven months since that's taken place, I find my mind sometimes looking back to going, man, that momentum was great. Man, I wish we could have. And my attention is back there. When those moments, you know what happens to my hope? It tanks. And I know you have your own story of what that looks like and what that means. Anytime we get stuck on the present or in our past, we lose sight of what God can do. We turn our gaze behind, and that impacts the future and what God would invite us to be a part of. And yet, Paul 
starts there to this letter he writes to the church in Philippi. He's like, okay, forgetting the past, but it's what comes next that's the encouraging part for us today. It's where we're going to see some hope unleashed in our lives. He said, look, we all know the impact of getting stuck there. We all know what that looks like. And he goes, hey, I want to take you to a better place, to a hopeful place. He's like, don't get stuck there. Instead, we need to refocus on something different to jump start our hope that is within us. Now, to help us kind of rekindle that hope and figure out how do we refocus on the future. I read a while back in preparing for today um, that there was this, this, this question that helps us kind of change our understanding to refocus on the future. I want you to listen to this. This is what I, 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 the quote that I found on this said. It says, this one question that helps us rekindle hope and refocus on the future is so important that it should be the primary question asked by every parent of every teenager. It should be asked by a spouse discouraged by his or her marriage. Anyone feeling discouraged about themselves, it's so important. It should be the first question asked by people who want to change their lives, lose weight, get out of debt, or just have a better future. It has the power to lift a person from discouragement, transform someone's mood, turn around a company, a life, or a family. This question really has the potential to get us dislodged from looking back and moving forward. It's why we need to refocus our future according to God. And this passage helps to kind of refocus us in this way. The question, you might be wondering, what is it? What is it? So you need to refocus on what can this become? We need to refocus our attention to what can this become? See, Jesus, when he walked on this earth, just didn't see people for who they were. Jesus looked at people and saw who they could be. Thank goodness. I mean, who they could become if they trusted him, if they walked with him. In fact, when Jesus would meet the earliest disciples, his core 12 that he invited to follow him, If we look in Mark chapter 1, it actually says, hey, I'm going to take you out of this job. And many of those early men were fishermen. He's like, I'm going to take you away from that, and I'm going to help you become a fisher of men. I'm going to take you out of the life you have because I have something better that I want to invite you into. Because he didn't just see them as fishermen. He saw new leaders of this new movement of Jesus. The disciples, they never would have dreamed about this. They never even imagined that Jesus could have done this in their lives. Their their hope when they saw what was going on was going to skyrocket as the world began to change as they started to follow Jesus. And do you know that God has bigger plans for you in your life? He has bigger plans for you that you could even dream about, and yet so often we still like to settle for looking back. See, everything begins to change when we learn to ask this question. What can this become? See, when you start to talk about and figure out what that this is in your life and what can it become, there's something that God goes, hey, whatever you feel like you're stuck in, whatever you feel like is holding you back, whatever you feel like you look back on and impacts your life more than you'd like it to, God goes, it can become something brand new, different, fresh, if we're willing to trust in him. So that question takes us to a place in our lives that we can turn around. And when we refocus our attention to this question and apply Jesus and his heart to it, it changes something in us. And this is what gives us hope. See, we're focusing on the future. When we ask this question, you know what it does? It gives you direction. It gives you direction. It helps you know the path that you're supposed to walk and some action steps you're supposed to take. I love how when we ask this question, we're looking forward. Because when we go, hey, what can this become? We start to imagine. We start to dream. We start to look ahead at what possibilities are out there. And we filter that through Jesus and it changes everything. Let's go back to our passage in Philippians. The second half of verse 13 says, forgetting the past and what we're looking forward. Say those words with me, Thrive. Looking forward. It is huge. We're looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race. This race imagery is right there going, hey, there's a line that's out there, a finish line, something that we love it to be at. Jesus is inviting us to go, hey, follow this path. Let's go wherever you feel like you've stuck. Let's begin looking ahead to what could be. See, when you see this direction coming because you ask this powerful question of what can this become, it changes things. 
See, God has a plan for us, this hope and a future, as the scriptures tell us, a direction, and that gives us some hopefulness, some energy, some excitement to our lives. It changes when you go, God, I'm going to go in your direction, and I'm going to trust you in the process. See, as we've thought about this even for Thrive, in terms of what we're going through, there's, there's a couple of new ministry directions and some new ministry opportunities that we have as a church that we're going to share with you over the next couple of weeks. As we've kind of come through this pandemic season and everything has drastically and radically changed, we've gotten to places where I just admitted to, I've looked back sometimes, but God's like, no, if you want to see things move forward, if you want some direction, refocus forward on where our church can go. And so as a leadership team, there's a couple of new things that are coming that we are extremely excited about. One of them is is related to the business community and some ways that we want to help encourage them in in what they're doing in this kind of tumultuous economic times. There's some, uh, a class that we're going to offer that is going to be just an incredible thing that's happening and coming up. And there's another one that we're going to partner with an organization organization, and we're going to just invite our church to step into an area of some place where kids are hurting, and they need some hope. As we saw these opportunities come to our church, we were praying for, like, hey, what is this new direction that God wants us to go in? How can we refocus forward? Because we don't just want to go, I can't wait for church to get back to the way that it was. If we're honest, and I know this might be hard to hear for some, church is never going back. Yes, we will gather together again, and we have the opportunity to do that, and you're going to find out that, you know, just in a few weeks, we have the ability to do that in Solano County, so those doors will open back up. And yet, the realities of what's changed for church has opened up new opportunities and doors, and as a church, we step into those. There's a new direction, there's new opportunity, and guess what? There's new impact that we could have, which is why we have to keep focusing forward. To say, God, we want to trust where you're taking us, and God wants to do the same thing for you in your life. As you're forgetting what's behind, you go, hey, I'm going to press on, and I'm going to look ahead. And I'm going to say, God, what can this become? And I want some new direction from you. I want some new hope from you. And and it gives me hope when I think about where Thrive is headed. And I know wherever you're at in your life, as you begin to sit here today, my prayer has been that you would start to go, hey, I could use some new direction. And when we have it in our lives, and we've all experienced it at different times and places, but in that area that you feel the most stuck, or the most often you find yourself looking back, God goes, I have something new that I want to invite you into today. I think the other thing that refocusing on the future and asking this question does is that it gives us stability and it gives us energy. They just bring something to us where all of a sudden there's this kind of flame that's just rekindled inside of us that we can't wait to see what's going on. I love this in verse 14. It says, I press on again. You see, he's like, I'm pressing forward in what I'm doing to reach the end of the race and receive what? The heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. There's this heavenly prize again. The more future focused we are, the more looking ahead and saying, God, where are you taking me? What can this area that I'm struggling with, what can this become in my life? The more that I put that into your hands, God, the more that encouragement shows up, the more hopeful I become, the more energy we experience, the more stable our lives become. It's kind of like going back to thinking about riding a bike. When I talk about that story uh, at the beginning, when you ride a bike, you know what's interesting? The faster you go, the actually the more stable you are, and the more fun it is. Go back to when you're trying to teach your kids to ride. If you've got kids, you've ever seen little ones ride. You know what their concern is? Going too fast. And they don't want to pedal because they know if they pedal, they'll go faster. And it just makes them nervous. So they barely pedal at all. And what do they do? They're constantly wobbling. And if you're like my kids, at some point they just fell over. And the message that I had to tell them was keep pedaling. Keep pedaling. Don't stop pedaling. It'll actually help you ride better, stay straighter, uh, be more stable in what's going on. And so the moment that that kind of clicks in their head and they start to get it, they realize, oh, I'm not wobbling as much. And then the moment they get a little bit more stable, guess what do kids want to do after they start to get it? They want to go faster because that is where it's more exciting. That's where it's more enjoyable to them. I think so often in our lives, we miss out because... When we get places of stuck, we get scared. We get fearful, like we talked about last week, and we start to slow down our pedaling, and then we get a little unstable in how we think, and we get a little wobbly in how the life goes and the choices and decisions that we make. 
And yet God is going, hey, in this moment, if you want to see your life become more rock solid built on his foundation, if you want to see more energy and more just passion come out of you in terms of where he's taking you, sometimes we got to go, hey, I'm going to just keep pedaling. I'm going to trust God and I'm going to move forward. And the more momentum that we create in our lives because we're moving forward with him, the better things become. Why? Because God is leading us forward. Does that mean everything is going to be easy? Absolutely not. But it means no matter what comes our way, we're able to weather through it. We're able to triumph over it. We're able to be hopeful in the midst of all of it because we are directed and moving forward in who God has called us to be in our lives. See, the key is to learn to refocus on the future and ask this question. What can this become? What can this become? But in order to like really take advantage of that question and help it begin to reshape our focus towards the future, you need to identify your this. You need to identify what is the this in your life. Whatever your this is that you've kind of sitting here and you're listening today going, you know what? Yeah, I don't really see a hopeful part for it. You know what? I look back at my marriage and things were better back then, but it's not anymore. You know, I look back at my attitude and I can't really trace to it, but there's some things that happen and it's just kind of back there somewhere, but I've just been struggling with it. Maybe it's a past hurt that you just can't get past, uh, a, a hurt or an addiction, a lost dream, a broken heart. There's so many things that your this could be, your financial situation, something to do with your kids. Whatever your this is, identify it, know it. Call it out, bring it out into the open and see when you identify what that this is, and you can put it into that question and go, God, what could my marriage then become? See, ask God to help you start seeing what your this can become. See, this is where the power of God comes in because it's not on your own where you're trying to figure it out. Now you're inviting God to say, where can you take this? God, where when I follow the race that you've marked out for me, when I follow the path that you've called me to, when I'm looking forward to where this could go, God, what could this become? I'm gonna invite you into it. So for you, all of a sudden you go, hey, what can my marriage become? What could my financial situation become? What could my family become? God, what could my attitude become? You start to put your this into that question and ask God, and in that moment, you begin to look forward and you invite a new direction. You invite a new hopefulness. You invite some encouragement instead of being discouraged. See, that's when, when you answer this question and you put your this into it to kind of move forward, guess what? Things change. Things change, and, and, and hope comes in. And remember, the theme throughout this whole series is that hope changes everything. Discouragement leave, encouragement takes over. There's like a new future that awaits you when you think about it because of what God can do. It's not on what you can do. It changes how you act. It changes the way you make decisions. It changes everything when you ask God to help you start seeing what can this become. You just wait. Your marriage can change. Your family can change. Your personal happiness, your health, even your faith. If it's gotten a little bit stuck and you hearken back to a time when you felt like you were closer and fresher, God, what can my faith become today? You start asking the question and things change and your hope goes up all because you forget what has been done and you focus on what can this become. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, it's not always easy for us sometimes to look back because we want to move beyond the hurts and the struggles and the pains, but we don't realize that we are often making decisions based on our eyes going backwards and not moving forward. And then we wonder where our hope is. God, we wonder why it's lost. We wonder why we're struggling or why we're hurting. And God, today we've seen how powerful it is in your word, how all throughout your scriptures, God, and especially in the passage in Philippians, you're calling us to go, wait a minute, I need to forget keeping my attention going backwards. Instead, I'm going to move forward. I'm gonna press on to what lies ahead 
and I'm gonna start asking the right question, God, of what can you do with the things in my life? What can this, the struggle, the hurt, the difficulty, God, whatever is holding us back, God, we can say, what can this become? And in that question, we invite something hopeful. Ultimately, God, because as the passage said, there's something that Jesus Christ can do in us because of his act on a cross, and the hope that he brings through the salvation of our souls, God. There is a new direction and path that he is calling us into. There is a, a new place that whatever situation we find ourselves in, God, you can change it because that is who our God is. So Father, for those that are out there today and they knew right away the area that they're stuck in or where they've looked back on and what's been holding them back, what thing from the past is impacting their present, God, and if they're not careful, it's gonna take their future in a direction they don't want to go. God, I pray you would just help them to know that you are right there with them. God, if they just are willing to identify it and call it out, and then change it up, their focus to say, God, would you help this to become something new? God, would you help me to become something different? Would you help me to become not defined by my past, but God, would you help me to become who you've called me to be? God, there are those that are going to be watching this that need to fully surrender their heart and their life to Jesus. There are those that need to say, I'm willing to act and follow the path that Jesus used to go on. God, I pray that they would have the courage today, that they would hear some hopeful words, that they don't have to live defeated. They don't have to live, God, wondering what could be. God, they can walk into something brand new because of who you're inviting them in their lives to become as they trust in Jesus. So God, would you help us to move forward today to take a step in your direction, God, away from the things that hold us back into something new. God, I thank you that because of this, there's gonna be lives changed homes that are going to be altered. God, that there are, God, going to be actions that are going to be taken. God, reconciliation. God, new steps, new opportunities, all because of this direction you're taking people in, that passion returns and hope is going to rise. All because we've chosen to refocus on the future, to refocus on, God, the hope that you give us by saying we can become all that God has called us to be when we trust in him. So God, would you help us to forget what's behind and instead refocus on what we can become when we put our faith and trust to take steps forward in and with our Savior Jesus. We give you thanks and in your name we pray, amen. Refocus on the future. What a great way that Pastor Andy just shared for us to unleash hope. It's all about forgetting what was in the past and asking God instead, what can this become? We can all get stuck and God longs for us to see movement, forward movement, so that we become all he longs for us to be. So Pastor Andy asked us to identify our this, the area in our lives that we are stuck. Once we identify it, we can ask God to give us direction and energy to move forward and refocus on the future. So. Would you share with us what your this area is? We're gonna go ahead and post a link to our Connect card. Our online hosts are putting it up now. Now we love taking next steps at Thrive and the perfect one for today is to go ahead and fill out the comment section and tell us what is your this? What is the area that you feel God calling you to refocus on the future and move forward in? Now, we also want to pray for you. So if you have a prayer request for something happening in your life, write that down too. We've seen just in these past weeks, amazing prayers that have been answered where all we can say is only God. We're also gonna go ahead and take our online offering. We're also seeing God move in our finances through Thrive and it's been incredible all through your generous giving. Finances could be that area that you identify as this, I'm stuck here. Now that's an amazing way to see God move forward. Giving generously back to God and helping others is a step that is so incredibly freeing. And I know that when I give, it gives me hope. 
So your giving makes a difference to others as well. Thrive has helped families in need recently. Obviously with the fires and everything going on, we've been able to actually pour in our community and you have been a part of that blessing. And that's what giving through Thrive can do. So would you give to make a difference? Now don't forget, there's three ways to give. You can give online through our website at thrivechurchca.com. You can text to give at 84321. And you can also just mail to check at 190 Bella Vista in Vacaville. Thank you so much for your generosity. We are so glad that you joined us today for Thrive Online. We look forward to seeing you in a couple weeks again when we go live, but join us again online next week for our next installment of Unleashing Hope. We'll be sharing one of the new ministry areas that Pastor Andy talked about in his message. I'm telling you, it's big and it's important and it's something you do not wanna miss. So please be here and definitely invite a friend to join you. We can't wait to see you next week for Thrive Online.